And it is not popular. And it is not even popular in the church. We would much rather swing the sword. You get quicker results. Let me tell you what else you get quicker results with? The law. You want quick results of people acting right? Give them the law. All, it works every time to get quick results. Those are Sunday morning results. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. I'm going to clean up my behavior. I'm going to live those thou shalt nots. Doesn't work out very well, does it? Eventually, the thou shalt not swallow you up because the law does that to you. It inflames your passion and you end up worse than when you started. We're not willing sometimes to play the slow game, the Holy Ghost game, the invisible kingdom game, which is allow grace to transform people into their new creation reality. Let that become their awareness. They may not change their actions very fast. And that bothers us sometimes. We go, well, we can't have these people coming to our church and they're living like that because it's going to make us look like we're soft on sin over here. We can't be soft on sin over here. We're going to be hardcore on sin over here. We're not going to put up with that because then we're going to look bad in the community. We can't look bad in the community because the community is what keeps us going. And so we've got to have a good reputation. We're going to, go, we're going to pound on that thing. You get in here, we're, I'll tell you what, let's get somebody in here and have a revival. We're going to get in here and get serious about things with God. And it's always law. Every time we're going to get in here and get serious with God, it's law and performance. It's rarely we're going to get serious with God by releasing people into their righteousness. You know, hardly ever hear that happen. What happens though when we put that law back on? We inflame, we throw gasoline on the fire of people's lust and desire and, and tra entrapment and stain and there's an explosion and we call that the devil getting mad about revival. I'll tell you what, we started preaching on sin. You want to know what happened? People started sinning because the devil got mad. Wait a minute. <laughs> what? When are we going to wake up and realize that the, inf the inflammation of people's old man is to pamper the system of the old man, which is the system of reciprocity. It's the system of do good, get good, do bad, get bad. That's the system we live in. And when we pamper that and call it gospel, don't be surprised when there's an explosion of sin. It didn't take the devil to do that. It just took the infusion of the law. Release people into the liberty of being sons and relax when they don't change fast enough for you. Because we know this, we just don't like to apply it. I don't judge on the appearance. I judge on the heart. By the way, that's another new covenant elbow in the Old Testament. Remember where Samuel goes to anoint the next king and he picks the tall guy? He picks the strong guy? You know what that is? That's the system of the world. We pick the, most, the, the best looking, the best spoken, the most articulate, the richest, the most experienced, the, the best debater. The be and God goes, you want the system of the world? You can have that king. He's easy to find. Just fight it out. Here comes. I don't look on the surface. I look at the heart. And then we don't get much of that in the old covenant. You know why? Because that's kingdom talk. That's kingdom talk. Feed them. 23. He prepared a great feast for them. After they ate and drank, he sent them away and they went to their master. So the bands of Syrian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. Oh, there's fights coming up because we're going to resort right back to the same business. But the bands of Syrian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. What did he do? Did he scare him with his sword? Did he show off with his military? Did he hit him with tanks and airstrikes? He put him at his table and he went, that's not what we're going to do. Let's love our enemy. What a difference the kingdom makes. What a difference the kingdom makes in my heart. What a difference the kingdom of God has made on the earth. You say, boy, it's not moving very fast. You're right, it's not, because there's a slow go with the kingdom. Jesus warned us of this. Jesus said, you know what the kingdom is like? The kingdom is like a mustard seed that you drop into the ground and it grows into the greatest tree in the field until it's so big that all the fowls of the air can take rest in its branches. In other words, it goes from a thing of insignificance to a thing of world-changing significance, but it grows at the pace of a tree that you can't knock down. You can't live long enough to see that tree to fruition. That's the kingdom. That's the message he's giving. He said the kingdom is like a little bit of yeast put into the meal. 
and the whole meal explodes. But it doesn't take much, just a little bit. He said the kingdom is like a farmer that plants his field and goes to bed. And he doesn't lay awake wondering if it's working, he just goes to sleep. Because digging it up to see if it works doesn't help, it only kills it. You gotta let the kingdom go to work and do what it's gonna do. The point Jesus makes in all of his stories is, it's not by observation, it's gonna be slow. You're not gonna to get to see the fullness of it. We're 2,000 years from Jesus, and we're still seeing the kingdom do what it can to stretch into the world. And the world fights back. Do you wanna know what the enemy, we, we've misidentified this, I'm trying to stop. We've misidentified this, we say that the devil's fighting Jesus. I think what's happening is not the devil fighting Jesus. Jesus has already won all of the battles. What's happening is the system of darkness is pushing against the kingdom. And unless the members of the kingdom realize who their first allegiance lies, with whom their first allegiance lies, we are going to see generations of the system of the world overrunning the kingdom. Because if Christians are just saved to go to heaven and not saved to make a difference in darkness and love their neighbor and pray for their enemy and feed those Syrians that are in their care. If that's not us, then we're gonna go another generation of watching the kingdom of God get steamrolled. And what we've done is we've sold our identity in the kingdom thinking that the church is better if we can get married to the state and the state can protect our rights. The more the state protects our rights, the better the kingdom is. No, the kingdom has no relation to the kingdoms of this world. In fact, we're often stronger in the kingdom when the state doesn't protect our rights. It forces us to figure out who we are and to then stand in that kingdom of light and say, no, we're not strong because our government says we're strong. We're strong because our king says we are strong. And if we're not careful, the problem with marrying the government is we'll respond the way it does so that it keeps helping us. We are not of this world. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. And we are in allegiance with Jesus Christ.